Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson. I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. I'm also an emeritus professor of clinical dentistry at UCLA with a private practice in West Los Angeles. And today we're going to cover the composite restoration for tooth number 30 for the ADEX or CDCA examination. Let's go ahead and start with a garrison matrix. This is a sectional matrix that fits really easily between the teeth, but you're not going to get a closure at the gingival unless you use a wedge. I'm using a wooden wedge here. You can certainly use the wedges that come with this system. I've just uh, gotten used to using wooden wedge. And we're going to use a garrison G-ring to create separation. So understand that the, the wedge is uh, going to be sealing the gingival, the band is going to be creating the contours, and the garrison ring is going to create the separation. We're now using a little bit of a universal adhesive just to kind of get the surfaces wetted and then we're going to go ahead at this point and light cure for the appropriate amount of time for the material. I'm going to use a, an injection molded technique. Uh, thank you Dr. David Clark. And uh, I'm going to use this technique to facilitate the adaptation of the paste composite which will be inserted after the flowable. Then it's just a matter of shaping it. We can use a variety of different instruments to create the anatomy that we want, we like here, and now we're ready to remove the matrix assembly, starting with the G-ring first, and then after that we're going to take out the wedge. What I like to do is place a small hole, if one is not present in the type of matrix you're using, with a little 330 diamond, and get access to the little band because it's quite tight. At this point we can utilize the 7102 carbide. This is an amazing uh, carbide because it really works well with a pointy end in the groove areas and I like to always start in the groove. Start in the negative zones not the positive zones. So you want to utilize this burr to create the, the tracking of the central groove and these grooves that go off between the cusps so that we can then have a reference point upon which to contour the more positive areas like the triangular ridges. This technique has worked extremely well throughout my career in maintaining uh, ideal anatomy, anatomy that really follows the anatomy of the tooth itself. A light touch, this is on high speed, but I'm not turning the high speed up to maximum uh, RPM. I'm utilizing it a little bit slower. You can certainly use a slow speed or an electric handpiece. If you're going to use an electric handpiece, probably about 20 to 30,000 RPM would be, would be good. So let's use a Diacomp point by Brassler and run this point, which is dull in this case, up against a disc like an OptiDisc course to create a new sharp point. And these are expensive, so it's nice to be able to get the most out of these as possible. We're now going to use this in the groove areas. The primary purpose of points is to go after groove areas and not the convex surfaces. So of course is all being done at slow speed. If you're using electric, I think 10 to 20,000 RPM is appropriate. Now we're going to switch to the Diacomp cup, which is in this case a little bit blunted. So I'm going to spin this up against a egg-shaped diamond to use it like I'm spinning clay on a potter's wheel and changing the shape of the lip to make it a little bit more uh, pointed or sharp so it can gain access into the groove areas and become more flexible as well. So we're going to utilize the edge of the cup. Some people look at these cups and wonder how could this possibly be used to polish grooves, but actually it's incredibly effective in getting grooves and convex surfaces. Another thing that's really great about these is they're very flexible when they're thin and they gain access to the interproximal zones and create a really nice smooth transition into the embrasure area. Really works great if you keep this cup thin at the working side of it. So we're starting to get a pretty nice, you know, kind of a matte finish to the surface. 
And now we're going to utilize the gray cup, which is the second step of the system. It starts with green and then follows with gray. It's only a two-step system. And, you know, if we're doing this clinically, we're definitely going to want to have ample water spray or air spray to keep things nice and cool. You know, and remember that this technique we're showing is not necessarily for a clinical case. You know, the injection molding technique that I've done with a single fill works really well for these type on teeth and in a situation like this. But of course, in a clinical situation, you're going to want to choose your filling technique very carefully based on the size of the cavity and whether you have a composite that can be cured in a single layer. But with a really conservative prep like this, I think on a board examination, this uh, works out really well. And then we're going to finish this up now with the second part of the feather light, the, the Diacomp Gray Feather Light. And we're going to use this now at progressively higher speeds with a lighter touch. You know, and because you have nice deep grooves on the occlusal, you'll get some powder that it'll accumulate, you need to just rinse that out of there and it usually reveals a really nice uh, surface underneath. And I find this to be quite typical with the Diacomp system. I'm just showing you how we were able to replicate the anatomy reasonably well uh, by utilizing the anatomy that was already existing. And one of the things I love is the, the creation of an occlusal embrasure to go with the buccal, lingual, and gingival embrasures. Make sure you don't have any flash. Uh, you can always use blades in approximately and things like that. But uh, the results are here. I think they turned out okay. And I wish you all the very best on whatever examination you're taking. It's been a pleasure. Take care.